Hi, FAU. My name is Garrett Astler, and I'm coming to you today from Gumbo Limbo Nature Center, where FAU operates three of its marine science laboratories. Now, there's a lot of important research being done here on uh, marine life, and especially local marine life. So let's take a look around and see what we can find. Help us find our way around here today at the FAU labs and to learn more about what research goes on. We have Cody Mott. How you doing? Nice to see you, Garrett. Cody, you're a grad student here at, at FAU? Yeah, I've been at FAU for four years. Excellent. So what kind of uh, work do you have going on back here? What uh, do we expect well, to find? Well, right now we have a lot of sea turtle work, but we also have a shark lab and a uh, seagrass lab here inside the building. Very good. All right, what do you say? Let's go check it out. Okay. So Cody, it looks like you guys have a lot of uh, different experiments going on here, but how did this place come to exist? How does FAU have a place over off campus? I don't understand. Um, well, it's a pretty amazing thing. Um, FAU actually works with the city of uh, Boca Raton to lease this facility, um, and it allows us an area to get uh, fresh seawater. Um, we can't get that at the FA at FAU main campus. No. So um, here we can, we, can, we can get that constantly. It um, allows us to keep a lot more So you animals. guys, you pump seawater from across the street at the beach over to here? Exactly. This facility has uh, three pipes that run from uh, Red Reef Park under A1A, and the pump's here actually right behind this building. Wow. So that's how you can keep uh, so much wildlife in so many tanks. Exactly. Um, it allows us uh, to have a lot more uh, water without doing the filtration and the extra work. Yeah, that's pretty unique how the city and the school can come together and be able to get some work done. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not every day that you get to see that. Um, here we have a bunch of partnerships at uh, Gumbo Limbo, and it also gives visitors um, and our residents of uh, the city of Boca Raton a chance to um, visit the Nature Center and see what FAU research is currently going on. That's excellent. So what experiment are we looking at here? Whose experiment is this exactly? Um, this tank here is set up to hold uh, larger creatures. Um, right now we have uh, some, we just had some green turtles in here as part of a behavioral study. Uh, we're looking at how they um, are able to navigate uh, long distances. And one you of mean like off. using the sun or the moon? How do they do it? Exactly. Uh, right now we know that they can use the uh, Earth's magnetic field. Wow. And we're hoping to uh, look to see how they use other visual cues like the sun. Very interesting. So, Cody, why do we have uh, the tanks in this housing like this? What is being studied here? Um, these turtles, so that we can see if they're using the sun to uh, navigate and orient, uh, we need to be able to change the, uh, the daytime and what time of day the turtle thinks it is. Well, so when we test it, um, we can predict which direction the turtle is going so to So you swim. can completely control how much light they're exposed to and then study the reactions and their behavior? Exactly. This allows us to change the uh, light cycle on the turtles, but it allows the lights to stay on for the rest of the lab. Okay, Cody, looks like you have a lot of baby sea turtles here, and if I'm not mistaken, are those radio tags? Uh, those are radio tags. All of these turtles here are um, part of studies done by Dr. Jeanette Weineken. Um, she's doing a couple different studies. The first one is the radio tag study. Nobody has tagged turtles this small ever before. She's working with another collaborator, um, Kate Mansfield, out of National Marine Fisheries, to attach some tiny um, tags originally made for birds, lightweight for birds. Wow, that's how, now, how old are these turtles exactly? Um, these turtles here, um, some of the smaller guys are about a week old. Uh, the bigger ones, uh, no more than a month. Wow. And how long would you keep them in an enclosure like this? Uh, depending on the study, um, most of these turtles will be here for three to four months. Um, some a little bit uh, longer than that. So, you get these turtles from nests on the beach. How do you decide which nests to take eggs from? And do you take all the eggs when you go to collect samples? Uh, we don't. We actually wait for all these hatchlings to emerge naturally, um, and we cage the top of the nest. So when they hatch out, um, they do it. They do it naturally. Uh, the amount of turtles we take depends on the study and the, um, the amount we're allowed. Uh, these, the research done with sea turtles, since they're a protected um, species, they're considered endangered worldwide. It's highly regulated both by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the uh, state of Florida. How do you know when they're going to come out of the nest if, they, if they're coming out naturally? Um, well, we have on, on Bocas five miles of beach, so about three to four hundred uh, loggerhead nests per year. Wow. So we can actually monitor the nests that are hatching out that we laid earlier. Typically for Boca Raton, it takes about 55 days. I see. Now, I heard that, like for example, with alligators, the temperature of the nest will, consider, will determine the sex of the babies. Like, is that the same for sea turtles too? Um, it's extremely similar. However, the temperature affects them oppositely. Um, in turtles, <laughs> the, uh, the warmer temperatures produce females and the cooler temperatures produce males. So we like to say hot girls, yeah. hot cool guys. <laughs> That's the rule for sea turtles. That's the rule for sea turtles. <laughs> 
Now you can see here these turtles are a different species. What kind of turtles are these and why are they tethered up like that? These here are leatherback turtles and leatherback turtles are grow up to be the largest of the sea turtle species. The record size is just over a ton. A ton? A ton. So um, these turtles are different than most of the other species of sea turtles. They're what they call pelagic, meaning they're open ocean. They um, never, once they leave our beaches, they only return to nest uh, about 10 to 15 years after they're born. Wow. Um, and during that time when they're not on our beaches, they're in the open ocean and they don't recognize physical barriers uh, because they spend so much time in deep water. These guys can actually dive to about 3,000 feet. So while they're out there, they don't have to worry about running into the sides of anything. So if we had them here in the tank without these tethers, they would run into the sides of the tank. What kind of risks do leatherbacks and other sea turtles have out in the wild mostly? What's like the number one thing? Oh, it's hatchling. Just about anything will eat them. Um, anything that can fit a, a turtle into their mouth is a predator. Once they get larger, their main predator ends up being sharks and then humans. Um, a lot of boating and fishing um, interactions yeah. with leatherbacks and loggerheads especially. Wow, Cody, all I know is it is really bright over here. What kind of work do we have going on? Uh, this right here is Dr. Marguerite Cook's uh, seagrass lab. Right now, she's doing some work um, looking at the effects of different salinities, uh, salt levels, and temperatures on seagrass. Seagrasses are in a very important community, uh, both for juvenile animals and also for any kind of animal that eats seagrasses, such as uh, turtles or manatees. Um, so they're looking at some, the, the study, the effects of uh, these different uh, physical variables on the growth rate and the health of uh, seagrasses here in Florida. Sure, I mean, it's got to be really important to the food chain. I mean, it's right at the base. A lot of, a lot of animals depend on it. Oh, no, absolutely. Um, seagrass communities are uh, very diverse, and um, exactly a lot of animals do depend on um, their health and their success. Certainly. Now, is, are they changing different lighting conditions? Like, is this uh, to see, like, what kind of effects global warming might have on seagrasses and things like that? That's one um, very, very possible effect that they can look at. Um, in these, what they call microcosm, which are these tiny tanks where they can alter different variables that oh. allows them to see what happens when you up the water temperature or um, increase ocean uh, acidification, the amount of carbon dioxide in the water. So each tank is like its own controlled miniature environment. That's exactly. really cool. All right, so here we are out back at the tanks at Gumbo Limbo, and we have a couple other things to look at. Who do you have here? Uh, this right here is a day-old hatchling loggerhead, so he or she hatched out this morning on Boca Raton Beach. Wow, he's so small. And when are you going to be releasing him? Uh, this one will be released tonight at dark. Um, it was pulled out of a nest, um, didn't make it out successfully on his own. So we'll give them a chance tonight when there's less predators That's out. good, a little extra boost. Now here we have in the tank another loggerhead, if I'm not mistaken, Dolly? Polly. Polly. Polly, actually. <laughs> um, named after a uh, longtime volunteer here at the Nature Center. Um, but we can compare. She's another loggerhead. Now she was part of the same sex determination study that was done at FAU that we saw earlier. Um, so she's two years old here. And she's not going to be too happy about me. Oh, flappy. But you can see how large these turtles grow within two years. Now, um, you can see the coloration is very different, too. Um, the coloration can definitely can definitely change. Um, this is a relatively dark loggerhead, but once they get a little bit older, they will lighten up. And the pink on the shell isn't, isn't natural. That's nail polish. Their shell's made out of the same material as your fingernails, keratin. Yeah. So um, that allows us to identify her, and we also know she's a girl since she's been, <laughs> she's been part of the uh, gender determination study done by Dr. Wanigan. That's good. Just another question for visitors to ask when they come here to come back. Absolutely. So it gives something for everybody to talk about. So we'll go ahead and release her. You know, Cody, it's places like this that make me really glad that I live in Boca. It's such a nice natural habitat and such a wonderful place to be as far as wildlife is concerned. But uh, I feel like people don't know enough about what to do if they come across, uh, you know, something like that on the beach or what they should do in their day-to-day -day life to help keep stuff clean and care about the environment. Um, well, definitely, you know, pick up after yourself and recycle and remember that um, you need to respect nature and that um, we share this planet with a lot of other animals and plants. Um, the other thing is, you know, if you do see some, you know, an animal on the beach, you know, feel free to watch. Um, but if you think something is uh, is wrong with that animal, the best thing to do is call the appropriate authorities, either um, the local authorities or uh, Fish and Wildlife. You can actually be reached by just uh, dialing pound FWC. Pound your, FWC. Pound FWC okay. on your on your phone. Yeah, because a lot of these creatures are protected, you know, and they're in danger when they need to 
me cared for. Oh, exactly. The, um, the species here, especially the sea turtles and, so, and some of the sharks and, and larger fishes, are protected um, both by federal and state regulations. So it, it is illegal to uh, harass or, or harm them. Um, and once we have those animals in captivity here, um, all that's already been pre-approved by, the, uh, by the, both the state and federal regulations. So they're pretty well taken care of for once they're here. I'll tell you what, you've got a great thing going on here at Gumbo Limbo. It makes me proud to be an FAU student. I want to thank you, Cody, for taking us around today. Hey, thanks for really stopping Really appreciate by. it. So if you're interested in the environment and how it should be protected, you should check out the new Mission Green Student Association at FAU. You can visit fau.edu slash mgsa.